Hi guys, so welcome to my man cave. Um, a little while ago I put up a mullet madness video, really enjoyed making it with my friend Bradley. We caught quite a few mullet, had a fantastic time fishing off the kayaks. Um, a couple of people have asked me, you know, what's the rig about? How do you do it? And, um, you know, I do think I do things a little bit differently to most people. Um, regarding mullet spinning, not to say that it's any better, although, you know, it certainly works for me. Um, as you gather, I've got a bit of a passion for mullet fishing and um, I really enjoy it. I think they're, they're great fish to catch. Kind of evolved over the years. I used to start with, you know, just a simple method of using a standard spinner, cutting off the treble hook and tying on a little rig on the bottom. Um, now I do things a little bit differently. I just thought, yeah, I'll show you what I do. I've got no secrets. Hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll agree that there's some bits there that, that might work for you. They certainly do all right for me. It's how I do it. And, you know, I, I seem to catch a few. So um, I carry on like this. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you do, you know, you can like, subscribe. Um, you know, take out a, a, a look at the mullet fishing video if you, if you haven't seen it. So um, here it is. I'm recording it on my phone because it's a bit overdue. But... Uh, Let's get it sorted out and um, show you what we're up to. Right, so stuff that I use. So here I've got a Codex Intelligent Tackle Reflex Spinner. It's a six gram spinner. I don't really use these specifically. It's for this demonstration purposes. I think for the majority of mullet fishing, a like MEP size two or three. Um, try different colors. Um, I'll show you towards the end some of the ones that I've done. Um, but yeah, different colours can sometimes seem to have a little bit of an effect. I do quite like sometimes using a bit of black, which is why I picked this one up. And um, you can use smaller spinners, I think particularly when the water's a, a little bit shallow. But a medium-sized spinner such as this would probably be perfect for most sort of situations that we encounter. A few other bits that um, also need. So I've got a little bit of heat shrink, um, a small hook. I think that's a size 10 or 12. A couple of pike wire crimps, a little mini genie clip, anti tangle sleeve or um, lead towel rubber. Um, I have here some Codex um, seven strand braid. I think any sort of um, wire is, is suitable for what we're going to be doing here. And probably one of the more important bits is um, the hook length. I like to go for around a 10 pound hook length. Now I use fluorocarbon because it's a little bit stiff um, and that stiffness, you know, you get it right and, and, and rig it right. That actually helps the presentation, stops things like the um, the worm spinning tangles and stuff like that. Oh, and I forgot my little, I've got a size six Aberdeen hook there, which is the bottom hook for the rig. So, one of the first things I'm going to do is just get the spinner out and um, we're going to just take off that treble hook so it is just a case of getting a sharp pair of uh, side cut, mind your eyes and snapping that away and um, as I say historically I used to just rig up onto the end of this have a hook length coming off and around here I would have originally just one hook um, and a little bit of rag and you'd pull that through the water. The spinner would attract the mullet. The mullet would sometimes snap at my, my, my rig and all going to well, there you'd, you'd caught a mullet. But um, we've moved on a little bit since then and this is what I do now. This thing is I get my little genie clip and I've, I've started to twist that eye open at the end. I open that eye up and I'm going to hook that on there and replace the loop with a new attachment point. So I'll just get some pliers and squeeze that up. Okay, so I've closed that genie clip back up um, and give me a new anchorage point on the back of my spinner. And that's one version of um, a completed spinner without the, the, the rig attached. But um, I say one version because more historically, I've actually been creating 
booms are making the spinner body longer. And I find that this boom is like really good. I love this black and green color as well. But this boom is made out of that pike trace that I showed you earlier on. And obviously the heat shrink. So we're gonna pop on a crimp. We're gonna pop on our clip. So it's a bit tricky trying to hold the phone in your line of field and um, and do uh, the concentrating and the talking and everything else at the same time. But so literally we've got there the crimp, the clip. Now it doesn't really, it's, it's not a science because this is all going to be under the rig tubing. But obviously what we do need is we need it to be sort of reasonably strong. Um, but we're going to do something, something like that. And I might make that just a little bit shorter and just pull it a little bit closer. Okay, so this one we're going to make the boom section about that long. I'm just going to, well, I can cut that off afterwards. I'm just going to crimp this up now. This is a proper crimping tool for, uh, these are the Fox Rage ones, but the proper crimping tool for the clips. We're going to trim off the excess. And again, I can leave quite a long tag in. That's going to be under the, the shrink tubing and the effect I'm trying to get is this is all about making it a little bit stiffer and a little bit anti-tangle I'm um, giving that boom effect that we spoke about earlier on so it doesn't have to be a work of beauty just one of reliability because we're just going to push push we're just going to push this section inside until we get Something like that. And there we have the same thing that we just finished before, but we've got it with um, the boom. I say the length for that is is sort of a medium long one for me. Obviously, heat shrink. So we're just going to shrink that down. Um, we can do that one of several ways: a heat gun, hair dryer. Um, boiling water, whichever you prefer, um, and we're going to shrink that on. So my wife says, what are you doing with my kettle? Well, obviously, I'm making mullet spinners. You know, she's more than welcome to come out into the man cave and join me, but um, I don't think she will. So I think we've safely got this for a little while. So those of you who are a bit younger and um, watching this, I'm thinking of doing this at home, just a word of caution, steam, which we're going to induce by boiling the kettle, but leaving the lid off gets very hot. And, um, you know, I'm leaning over this so you can easily sort of burn your eyes and face if you're not careful, um, as well as your fingers. So please be careful. So with the lid off, it um, keeps boiling, which is what we want. We're just gonna put our heat shrink over the top. Um, obviously it's steaming up the camera there, so I'm sorry about that guys, but not a lot I can do with that. Not a great angle. Okay, so while we're steaming it, I was just pulling with um, the side cutters, the hook length and everything straight to try and get the body straight and um, just hold it straight while it cools and you end up with something like this. So the final bits really, the final stages, I'm going to pull off, I don't know, 18 inches is more than enough of this uh, fluorocarbon. And we're going to start by... see as well these days just turning that on there or tying that on there shall we say with a knot of your choice now I prefer something what I would call a five tone green now um, just gives a nice strong knot 
Now you see this is like really curly and completely not what we want in terms of a presentation currently. Because I think with mullet fishing, getting this uh getting this all to sit nicely, to spin nicely, the worm to be following the spinner on a nice straight hook length is all um just wet that off there guys with my lips. But um it's is all all it's about is uh you know, we want it following the spinner, the spinner here, the hook length behind, the worm nice and straight, and we'll talk about a bit more about that, but I don't know if you can see that this is all springy, it's it's stiff, it's unmanageable. Now I'm gonna cut that off and I've left a bit of a tag, lit, tag end on there. Um, I don't know if we can see that, but that also helps the worm actually sliding down. It's, it's almost like a little barb, um, but it's not the primary way that we're going to do that. We're going to do that a little bit like a panel rig. We've got a tiny bit of tubing here. We're going to cut a little bit of tubing off. We're going to thread that tubing. Okay, so we're going to thread that tubing like that onto that line. Now the second hook, we're going to hook down. Now this is a small hook. This is... And I kind of quite like these with the upturned eye for this kind of setup. So we're going to put that down through the tubing and out. And that tubing then becomes like a line guide. So that's down towards the other hook. So as it comes back round, it is now facing the same direction. Like so. We're just going to pull that round. And this is where the upturned eye helps just to keep everything a little bit a little bit straighter a little bit neater not essential so don't get too hung up about it but you see what i mean about it all being all springy and kinky not nice but i say we're not finished so there we go we've got the two hooks nice sharp hooks um see they both hooked me already still on the length of line okay and this is the last component that we're actually going to use which is the anti-tangle sleeve. And just then we've got a tiny bit of finishing. So that threads on, tapered end, pointy end down towards my hooks. And then I'm gonna pick a length of the hook length. So let's just say I wanna trail it that far behind the thing with the line doubled over. I'm just gonna do a small double hand loop and again once i'll just take that to my mouth wet that and tighten that up like so and again don't get too hung up about the the tag end because that's going to be inside that towel rubber so we have got the almost completed rig but one of the things i spoke about one of the key things i think with this setup and one of the reasons why we're actually using this horrible stiff material with lots of memory, which doesn't appear to initially be suitable, is we want that nice and straight. So the, the spinner's up here. This is following, like so. And we want it nice and straight. And we want a worm length. Um, now don't go too short with the worm. The shorter it is, the more it spins around like this. I think when the worm's spinning, not only to get tangles on the hook length, I think actually with the worm rotating and the spinner rotating up the front, it actually puts them off. It certainly seems to. Um, but yeah, the reason we've got this little loop is we're just going to hook that onto the spinner like that. So we'll have a number of those pre-tied. Um, that's quite a long one. As I say, it's about as long as I go normally. Then I just slide the tail rubber up, which makes that boom length even longer. But then I've got a rig like that, that is anti-tangle proof. But again, we've still got that kinky, springy, horrible line on there. So this is where I'm, again, a little bit different to, to most. So I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna steam that in the kettle. And then as it cools and I'm pulling that tight, 
you end up with a nice straight hook length. And um, that straight hook length with that straight memory, say it's fine if we can keep it like that, um, because it, it will fish like that. So I generally have a whole load of them in a car fishing rig wallet, all made up, ready to go. Um, so if at any time I, you know, turn a hook over, snap up, get a tangle, you know, something's not quite right, I can literally just, as you saw, clip one on, clip one off um, and be fishing again. So keep them in there after steaming that hook length on the kettle and it keeps it nice and straight and that memory then becomes not your enemy, but your your ally. And as you see, I've, I've literally got, there, I've literally got a whole load ready to go. And as I say, that towel wrapper just holds that nice and neat like the completed one here. Um, just a few hooking tips, obviously I've not steamed this yet, but I'm gonna thread a bit of rag up there. So we're probably using like a third of a rag. We thread it up and this hook is sliding. So then I can hook it onto this hook and you, you're never gonna catch a mullet on this top hook. They never really take it that, that deep, um, but it's quite tight on this, this hook length. So that will then hook into the, the ragworm and you can between just adjust the distance between the two hooks to get your bait nice and straight and don't hang the ragworm past that bend of that hook because the mullet they're going to take short if you've got it hanging over the end you're just going to get lots of false pulls you're not going to get the desired effect so we really want to stop it at the bend of that hook use that hook to keep it straight and then we're going to fish it behind that that spinner now that spinner gets the all the attention and you could fish a spinner on its own, but you, you, you get like one take in about 2,000. It's loads of follows, but you know, rarely take it. And But you put a bit of rag on these bottom two hooks and it's a deadly, deadly method. And it's absolutely fantastic fun. So just gonna, as you see, I'm pulling this tight over the boiling water and I've, I've, I've got the kettle slightly out of shot guys, but you can hear it, you can tell what I'm doing, and that's just so that I don't steam up and you can actually see the, you know, it doesn't take ages, only one 30 seconds or so. And once you're, you're ready, and you're pulling that tight, just let it cool. And, you know, all that memory is going to disappear, and once you put it into that rig wallet, you've got, yourself a straight stiff anti-tangle deadly little mullet spinner there you go anyway maybe different maybe not it's the way i do it i enjoy it i like it and that's my mullet rig thanks for watching there you go just look now that heat has taken out that memory how nice that sits beautiful thanks for watching as i said if you like please subscribe um you know leave a little bit of comment love to see what you guys do as i say this has just come about because i suppose because i fish so many different species being a carp angler course angler pike angler you know i I've just sort of used several different methods from across the disciplines, if you like. There you go.